بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين شهد لا إله إلا الله واتلا شرك الله وعشر محمد نبيه ورسوله ما بعد سلام عليكم My name is Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? Can you say Yusuf? Yeah, very good. I wish you'd teach my wife. She keeps mispronouncing it. She calls me useless. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now, how many of you were in the program today I was teaching this, uh, trying to teach about how to call the people to Islam called Da'wah? I just used an example what I was telling you about. Remember I was telling you when you introduce yourself to somebody, you got to get friendly with them. So I just used an example right there. Because this would disarm the people. This disarm them and make them relax a little bit. Because they're coming to you with things like, How come your Muslims has to kill all the people? What kind of question is that? How come you have to beat your wives? Why does your book tell you that you're the only ones going to go to paradise? So these kind of questions, when they come to you, what are you going to do? So the first thing, as we said, as we said in the program, and I hope, by the way, if you didn't join us today, join us tomorrow. But when we're doing it, you look through the schedule. I'm not going to get into that, but just look through the schedule and join us for this whenever we're talking about the Dawah. Because part of giving Dawah is you and if the people aren't buying it they're not going to listen to what you got to say so you got to soften them up a little bit got me okay where are we the subject tonight is the subject of priests and preachers entering Islam and uh, often people ask me we heard about you used to be a priest or something and you came into Islam so you know tell us about it we want to know how does that happen and it's not just Muslims who want to know non-Muslims would like to know the story too because they feel like you mean you didn't understand? I mean, you were a priest, you didn't understand about Jesus? Come on, man! So, it's a topic that I talk about a lot. The first thing I have to do is clarify a couple of points. I was not a priest. In the English, we use the word priest to mean somebody who is in the Catholic Church. If you're not from the Catholics, if you're from the Protestants, then you don't use that term. We usually use the term for instance, pastor, minister, preacher, reverend. And these are some of the titles. We came up with an awful lot of them because that's the way humans are, right? Give ourselves titles. So, I was a preacher and a minister of music. But it doesn't really matter. But just if you're talking to a Christian and you say a priest, he's going to say, oh my God. How is that? And when they find out, oh, you weren't a Catholic, well, that's a lie, then you weren't a priest. So I want to clarify that. As a matter of fact, I will tell you in my own estimation, I'm probably the least, the least of the factions within this equation. Because there were so many other people that came into Islam the same time I did. That's why it takes a little bit of time to tell the story. But they asked me to tell it tonight, so we're going to do that. But I want you to listen carefully to realize what goes through the mind of a person that's not Muslim. Okay? And I usually start out by telling people that my father and I were both ministers and both of us were also businessmen. In the reverse order, we were business first and preacher second. Got me? Because, well, you know, as they say, business is business. And that's exactly how it worked. We operated mostly in Texas. We had a place in San Antonio, Houston, and also in the Dallas area. And we were very concerned about Christian conditions. So my father started something called Concerned Christian Centers. 
And basically, if you look at it from a material point of view, it was a place to sell stuff. But what we would do is take consignment things in. People could bring things into us, and then we would sell it and keep part of the money. And keep a lot of the money. But anyway, they would bring in what they make with their hands, arts and crafts. And a lot of old women, they like to sit around and make things, then they give it to us. And this helps the church, which is called the church, and then it helps them as well. So it became like business and religion tied together, and that's very common in our country. At one point, my father told me, we're going to start doing business with a man from Egypt. Well, I said, well, look, this is great, international, sounds good, we can put this in our business card, we're international. He said, and this man is from Cairo, Egypt, and that's where, if you know, they have the Nile River, they have those big pyramids, they have the Sphinx, Abu Hu, you know, they got everything. And we said, oh, this is good. He said, and he's a Muslim. I'll never forget it. I've told the story many times, but it's just like it happened yesterday. I'm standing in between the kitchen or in the dining room and the living room area. You know, like this when we're talking and I just stopped like this. I said, what? A Muslim? No way. No way do I want anything to do with that. They, Dad, come on. You should know better than anybody. Because we were linked in with other preachers. My father supported people like Pat Robertson. Huh? You know him? Huh? Pat Robertson? <laughs> and Oral Roberts. He's not very popular anymore, but he used to be real strong. And his ministry up in Tucson, up in uh, Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. In addition to that, people like uh, Benny Hind. I don't know if you heard of Benny Hind. He's coming over this way, so look out. And there's <laughs> many of them, many of them. John Hagee and uh, the list goes on. Jerry Falwell, Jimmy Swagger, some of the names, maybe you heard those before. We know these people. We know all about them. All about them. Okay? So at one point, here I am standing there talking to my father about a Muslim. These are the enemies of God. This is what we've been taught. These same people, I just mentioned their names, in their preaching on the television and so on, this is what they teach. Muslims are no good. Now it, now it just became Muslims are terrorists. But back then, you know, we didn't reach that level yet. We were still just kidnappers, hijackers, you know. They said that Muslims don't believe in God, that they're worshiping a black box in the desert and they kiss the ground five times a day. Now that's what we know, man. So here's this Muslim going to do business with us. I told my dad, no way, I'm not going to do it. And he insisted, he said, I, I want you to meet this man. He's very nice. And I said, I don't want to meet him. I, was, I never am like this, by the way. But on this case, I said, no, that's one thing I'm going to stand firm against. We're not going to do it. He said, I want you just to meet him. I said, all right, I'll do it for you. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to go to church. And it's going to be on Sunday. When I come out of the church, I'm going to have my Bible under my arm. I'm going to have the salib. I used to carry a big cross. I'm going to have my cross with me. And I'm going to have my hat that says, Jesus is Lord. And I'm going to have my wife, born again Christian, with me. And we are going to get this demon, devil, infidel, Muslim. And we're going to show him Jesus. And this is a true story, by the way. So, I got up that morning on Sunday and I was thinking, ah oh, man, you know. We went to church. Strangely enough, the preacher was preaching out of the Old Testament about salvation coming at the time of David, which, I, which really puzzled me because according to Christianity, it's coming through Jesus. And it, it really, that opened the door for me, but that comes up later in the story. Why was he saying there's salvation before Jesus? That's interesting. Now, when I get there to my father's store, I'm looking around, you know. I'm looking for somebody wearing, you know, a long white robe and some kind of black, you know, thing over that, with a long beard, and, hmm, I guess I was looking for me, what I, <laughs> anyhow, when I get in there, I don't see this guy. By the way, Imama, sword, everything, I, I told Khomeini, maybe, this is what I had pictured. I said, where is he? I'm ready. My father said, he's over here. 
I said, where? I said, here. I was a normal guy. He was normal. He didn't, you know, didn't have a beard. Or he didn't have any hair at all. How do you do? He told him my name. He introduced himself. His name is Muhammad. I said, how do you do? After the niceties of, hello, how are you, how's everything, I said, uh, do you believe in God? He said, yes. Oh, yeah? Hmm, sure. He said, yeah. Abraham, yeah. Hmm. What about David and Suleiman? He said, yeah. So when I meet this man, I'm impressed that he's believing these things, but I thought maybe he's just saying it. So I even asked him, what about Jesus? Because I thought maybe they're kind of... First I thought Muslims were like Hindus. That was first. And then when he said he believed in some of the things of the Bible, I said, okay, maybe they're like Jews. So that's when I said, yes, but what about Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? And he said, yes. I said, okay, okay, wait a minute. This is going to be easy. I can convert this guy. So... I agreed that we're going to do business with him. And in fact, I took him immediately out to have tea together. We sit together, drink tea, talk a little while. And I started trying to preach to him right away. I'm in the Bible. I got it right there. Flip it open. Genesis. Let's talk about Abraham. What do you know about Abraham? Abraham, he had two sons, you see. And blah, 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 blah. And I'm doing all the preaching to him. Hmm? You imagine this? And he sit there. Hmm. He's a graduate of Allah's heart. And he's, mm -hmm, like this. Get me? You know what I'm saying? Well, it happened that during Ramadan, some of his friends that he was staying with, they had to move their apartment around or something, and he was going to go stay in the masjid for itikaf in Ramadan. It's normal. We didn't understand. I thought he has nowhere to go. And I told my dad, this man has nowhere to go. And my dad said, no, he's got money. I said, no, no, he doesn't. Daddy, I'm telling you, he has no place to go. I heard him say he's going to go live in the mosque. Be a Christian, if you're going to live in the church, ooh, that's the worst. So I said, let me, let me offer that he can stay at our place. And my dad said, no, you, you, don't do that. That's not right. I said, no, I'm going to offer it to him. I went to him and I said, how would you like to come stay at our place? He said, no, 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 I want to go and stay there. I want to stay in the mosque and it's something good. I said, oh man, look at this poor man. Oh my God, he doesn't know, you know. I, he just, oh, poor soul. Please come and stay in our house. And he said, no, I can't. I, I need to go stay over there. I said, look at, I'm scratching his dignity. So I told him, listen, no, 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 no. I want you to come and you can pay. You can pay money and stay with us. He said, how much? I said, $15 a week. Which in America is like nothing. $15 is nothing. I said, and then he kind of hesitated. I said, and we'll pay for all the food. Will you eat $15 worth of food in one day in America? He said, okay, all right. And I told my dad later, I said, see how I did that? Because now he'll stay with us. He knows he's getting a good deal on the food and I was making it all about money. Well, I didn't know he wanted to come and stay with us. He wanted to learn about how are Americans and how is the Dawa going to be. What do we believe? Especially people who are preaching. So he came and stayed in our house. And I said, well, now that's good. I'll travel with him and go with him in places and he'll see and he'll learn about Christianity. As we were traveling and working together, we put up tables just like this and booths and things and set things out for people to come and look at them and sell things. And I caught him one time. He, when somebody wanted to take something from the front, he took it from the back and gave it to him. And I looked at him. And the next time somebody started to take something, he took from the back and gave it to him. I said, hey, Muhammad, we take the stuff from the front because that's the old stuff the new stuff in the back just hold it back you know what I'm saying this is dated material get rid of the junk first he said no I can't in my religion we can't sell something unless we give the people the best I said mm, got me on that one and I'm supposed to be telling him about a better deal I said okay okay yeah whatever 
You're never going to make any money though. But that's all right. 